This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Just like always, the PCB package arrived super fast. This time I've ordered multiple boards for multiple projects, so the whole package is pretty big. I even got a couple of PCBWay stickers, which is pretty cool. Even though I've got a lot of boards, in this video we will focus on only one of them. Of course I've also ordered a backup version, which is basically the same board, but with slight changes. So let's open it up and take a closer look. Every time you order the PCBs, you get at least 5 pieces. Those spare boards will come in handy if you somehow mess up the soldering. As you can see, the quality is pretty nice and the black solder mask looks very professional. My board, which I've designed, is pretty much the Raspberry Pi Pico clone. It uses all of the exact same hardware and works just like the original one. Since both boards are basically the same, I will simply transfer all of the components from the original board to mine. During the soldering, I've noticed that I actually forgot to include the pads for the diode. This of course can be easily fixed by scratching off some of the solder mask and soldering the diode to the empty spots. Now that I've soldered all of the components, I'm ready to connect it to my PC and check if it's working properly. As you can see, my board is now being recognized by the Arduino software and I can now upload some of the example files. So it seems I finally found the perfect magnifier for this project. You can even get it as a kit on AliExpress, which also includes the display and driver board. Of course, I'm not going to use a whole module since it's pretty big, so I will simply pull out the magnifier from all of those plastic parts. Inside the plastic housing is the magnifier assembly. As you can probably tell, this one is quite big as well, so let's open it and see if we can get it even smaller. Thankfully the inside part of this assembly has some plastic threads that make it look like it should be fairly simple to open it up. I should be able to open the module by rotating this part right here. As you can see, the plastic part basically acts like a simple screw, maybe even like a bottle cap. With that part removed, I can now easily take out the lenses. This one right here is the main magnifier. There's also this other piece right here, which is pretty useless for me, since I will need as much magnification as possible. The magnifier, of course, is slightly too big for this project, so I will trim it down into correct shape. I've prepared a couple of plastic frames that should make the trimming way easier. I basically put the lens inside the frame and then trim it down. As you can see the trimmed edges are pretty smooth and the lens is exact shape as I need it to be. I've trimmed the magnifier just a little bit more which left me with this semi-square piece. For this build you will need 0.4 inch FLCOS micro display along with the micro HDMI driver board. You can easily find them on AliExpress but I will put some links in the description. As you may have already noticed the FFC is bent at 90 degrees. This is absolutely required for this to work. You will also need a couple of self-tapping screws, particularly the 1.5 mm. Of course it will also require a couple of 3D printed parts. You can find all of the required files on my Patreon page. I will start the assembly with the display. This part is not very difficult, since you basically slide the display into the 3D printed case. Just make sure you have your FFC bent at 90 degrees. It's very easy to damage the FFC, but fortunately it's quite cheap and you can replace it easily. Next up are the optics. As you can see, I will be using the trimmed magnifier, which I've made previously. But before installing the magnifier, you should properly clean it with microfiber cloth. Once you're done with the cleaning, try not to touch it with your fingers. You install the magnifier by pushing it inside the 3D printed piece with the render side facing the plastic. After pushing the lens inside, it's best to clean it with microfiber cloth from the outside part as well. My magnifier is already heavily damaged as I've did a lot of experiments with it. Next up is the Pico board. It goes directly into the plastic frame right underneath the display driver board. After installing the Pico, it's time to install the driver board. For this step, you will need the plastic cover, which basically works as a driver board holder. 
you simply push the driver board on top of this small plastic tower and when you have it in correct position, you melt the plastic tower from above. The plastic tower will hold the driver board in place and make sure it stays in the correct position. And now you can install the driver board inside the plastic frame. And now you're ready to mount the micro display on top of the plastic frame. This can be easily done with a single self-tapping screw which will hold it in correct spot. You mount the display housing by putting a single self-tapping screw through the headband ridge and then screw it into the display housing. You can leave it loose for now, as you may want to adjust that viewing angle, but if it feels right to you, just tighten it up with a screwdriver and it will stay in the correct position. And lastly we will install the combiner. For this part you will need this small plastic piece, which has a small ridge on it, which will hold the semi-transparent acrylic plastic. To cut out the combiner, I will use this small 3D printed jig, which will help me cut out the correct dimensions. First I will grab some masking tape and stick the jig on top of it. And now I will cut out any excess tape. Now I will grab the semi-transparent acrylic and stick the cutout masking tape on top of it. After that I've simply cut out all of the plastic part that wasn't covered with the masking tape. And just like that, the combiner is now ready. Now I will simply push the combiner into the plastic part. And now I'm ready to install it on top of the headband. I will combine both pieces by melting them together with my soldering iron. And just like that, the side loader is now finished. It doesn't have the gyroscope yet, but if you don't need it, then you can already use it. By far the most annoying thing about this build is that I can't show you properly what the image looks like through the semi-transparent combiner. When I wear it on my head, the image quality is actually pretty nice. But since the display has to be as close to the eye as possible, capturing it with my phone is pretty much impossible. Of course it wouldn't be much of the augmented reality device without the real Steam VR support. I've included the Raspberry Pi Picon just for that. It runs the Hades VR firmware, which lets you use any kind of display device as a real Steam VR headset. You can barely see it through the combiner, but it actually runs the Steam VR home environment right at this moment. As you can see, there is no rotation data from the headset, since at this point there is no gyroscope installed. You can easily fix that by using those off-the-shelf MPU modules, but for the size sake I will use my own custom PCB. It's quite a bit smaller than the original one and it will fit on the headband quite nicely. I've transferred all of the original components to my custom board and it's now pretty much ready to go. So now I will solder the gyroscope module directly to the Raspberry Pi Pico. It requires only four short Kenner wires to connect the gyroscope to the Pico board. The plan is to install the gyroscope module on the outside part of the glasses so the electronics cover has to be modified. I've designed a brand new cover with a small hole in one of the corners as well as a simple gyroscope housing. But before I assemble everything I will have to desolder the wires and thread them to the hole on the cover. Thankfully it's only 4 wires so whole thing was pretty quick. With the wires in place, I can now install the display driver board. It's pretty much the same process as before. And now the whole device should be pretty much ready to go. Of course I still need to install the plastic cover. I will melt the gyroscope cover directly to the main piece since it's pretty small and there is not enough space for screws. I've put everything back together just like before and the side loader is now finished. As you can barely see, the display is working properly. So for this part, I've enabled the SteamVR screen mirroring since it's impossible to get the screen on the camera. As you can see, the whole device works perfectly. And that's pretty much all for today. Thanks for watching everyone and hope to see you in the next video. And as always, huge thanks to my patrons. See you later and goodbye.